Hello and thanks for tuning in to another Humanware Snapshot video for the Braille Note Touch. My name is Greg Stills and I'm Humanware's Product Manager of Blindness Products. In this video we're going to walk you through just the basic options that are available to configure your Braille Note Touch to be, you know, what you like um, from your own preferences and things like that, speech and Braille settings. Um, right now I'm at the lock screen so what I'm going to do is press space with U. That's a quick way to unlock your device. Device unlocked. Main menu and I'm using just touch braille so I'm typing on the glass of the device as if I was typing with keys underneath my fingers. If I chose to I could flip down the physical keyboard and use it that way but because I'm able to type completely silently on the touch using the glass I prefer to use it that way. Now one of the biggest benefits of the Braille Note Touch is the Keysoft interface and really the way that that HumanWare has customized this device is it's, it's so much more than a note taker. It's a braille tablet but what's wonderful about it is that you don't have to know anything about Android to really use this device effectively and to be extremely productive. So things like first letter navigation and other applications, um, all the familiar Braille shortcuts and commands that you're used to from Braille notes and note takers in general make it a very very simple device to use. Having said that, the configuration of the device is another aspect and one thing that Braille Note users probably remember is the options menu and the options menu is really a bridge between Android and Keysoft. It's a way that you can configure the device to your liking for speech and Braille but also get in and actually do some modifications to the Android settings and we'll go through that now so you can see exactly what settings are available and what they do. So what I'm going to do is go to the options menu the same way that I always have gone there by pressing space and O. Option, configure primary language profile. And options menu is right select there. Profile. The primary first item profile. the first item that's in the list is select language profile. And this is a new concept that we've developed. One of the things we heard from our users is that switching languages or switching between two language configurations was always a challenge on past Braille notes. You had to always configure your Braille table, your text to speech, all that kind of stuff. So now with one press of a command, and we'll show this in a later video. Um, you can toggle between two languages. So if, you, if you're if you a student taking a Spanish class and you always are switching between English and Spanish or French and English or whatever, you're able to just with one keystroke, enter with L, toggle between your languages. So that's how you select it the long way. That's without using the keyboard shortcut. But if I press next... Configure primary language profile. Configure primary language profile. And this has a whole bunch of settings related to what is is uh, related to the uh, actual language profile or the language you're going to use. So I'm just pressing my cursor router key to activate this. Configure language profile. Text to speech engine. Braille note touch acapella. Okay, and the first thing you can configure is your text to speech engine, which the one of the other nice things about the Braille note touch is that any user of this device can go on the Google Play Store and download whatever text-to-speech engine they want. So if you prefer Eloquence, you can go on the Google Store and, and buy Eloquence if you want to use that. I think it's $20 US. But in this case, it comes with Braille Note Touch Acapella. And the next item, which I'm going to hit my next thumb key on the right side. Voice, English, United States, Heather. It's right now Voice, English, United States, Heather. And I'll activate this. Voice, English, United States, Heather. And I'm going to hit my next thumb key. Spanish, Mexico, Rosa. And you see that I've got a Mexico Spanish voice, Rosa, which is another a cappella voice on here that I've downloaded. So our contract with a cappella says that we can have two active voices at one time, and I can hit next. Replace Rosa by another voice. And I can choose to replace Rosa by another voice by activating this. Select second voice's language. Arabic. And I can choose, you can see here are many of the languages that we support for languages or for voices that are available. So I have Arabic. Check. Czech, Danish, Danish um, a whole bunch of different voices. I'm not going to go through them all, but you can choose any of the voices depending on what you speak. Voice. And replace Rosa by another at, voice. At the, I just hit the back button there. At the current time, um, the Braille Note Touch is currently localized only in English, meaning that the menus and things are all only uh, English localized. However, if you're somebody who speaks two languages and you access websites or you get documents that are in other languages, there's nothing stopping you from using any of the pre-installed languages on the Braille Note Touch um, for Braille tables and text-to-speech. I'm going to press the back button again or space with E. Configure language profile. Voice. English. So now United I'm... States. Heather. Now I'm back at the uh, configure primary language profile. So the primary language is just that. It's the language you're going to be in the most of the majority of the time. I'm going to hit next. Speech rate fast. 
So it's, you can set it to speech rate. It's currently set to fast, which is pretty reasonable. I'm going to hit next again. Listen to an example. So you can, if you don't know what fast is, you can listen to an example um, from just an example quote that it would speak to you. Speech volume, match media volume. Speech volume, match media volume. This means that would you like the media volume to be softer than the speech or the same? Additional TTS settings. Additional text-to-speech settings, TTS settings, is, allows you that if you are somebody who downloaded Eloquence or some other text-to-speech voice, you can go in and configure it using its own custom settings panel. Um, some of these uh, things have a little bit more text-to-speech engines, have more options and things that you can configure. Preferred Braille grade for entry, literary Braille. So in this case, this is where you choose whether you want literary or uh, computer Braille. Preferred Braille grade for display, literary Braille. So that is, you can have computer braille for entry, but literary braille for display if you like two different uh, options. Or you can have them, I always have them the same. I'm going to hit next. Computer braille table, English US little e. And in this case, you can choose what computer braille table you want. And there's uh, many, many computer languages that table. are supported. English US little e. So right there it says English US lib Louis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit UK next. Little e. There's UK lib France Louis. Unifier, little e. So now you have all of Spanish these options e. that are available if you want to configure different uh, languages. I'm going to hit uh, back or space with E to configure get back. language profile. Computer Braille table, English US E. I'm going to hit next. Literary Braille table, English US Duxbury grade 2. And this one tells you that we're using the English Duxbury grade 2. I'm going to activate that. Literary Braille table, English U Duxbury grade 2. And I could choose the UEB Duxbury Braille table if I prefer to write literary Braille in UEB. I can choose, you can English see U many Duxbury, of the English US Duxbury grade two. options that English are available. US Duxbury grade one. Next. English UK Duxbury grade 2. English UK Duxbury grade 1. English Australia pre unified Duxbury grade 2. So you see there's a number of, English, of options. Here's Louis French. Grade one. Francais Quebec with Louis grade 2. So we offer, you'll notice that there's a combination of Lib Louis and Duxbury tables in here. And that's because certain languages prefer. Lib Louis in some languages and certain languages prefer Duxbury. I'm going to press back to exit out of this. Configure language profile. Literary Braille table. English US Duxbury grade 2. Bottom. And that's it. I hit next and that's the last item. So that just shows you that you can configure your speech and your Braille for specific profiles. So that's my primary. You see my primary is set to English. If I press back. Options menu. Configure primary language profile. I'm going to hit next. Configure secondary language profile. And now you'll see my secondary. My secondary language, language profile. profile. Voice. Spanish. Mexico. Rosa. My voice is already pre-configured to Spanish. I'm going to hit next. Edit. Preferred Braille grade. Preferred Braille grade for computer Braille table. Spanish little e. And you see that my my computer Braille table is already pre-configured to Spanish. Literary Braille table. Spanish Duxbury grade two. And my pre-configured literary Braille table is pre-configured to Spanish. The reason Option for that, I just hit back. Configure secondary. Is that with one key press, I can toggle immediately to uh, to configure my Spanish. So we'll we'll go through the the language switching in another video. I'm going to hit next. Keyboard settings. Here's the keyboard settings. Some of the some of these are going to be things that you'll change to your own preferences. I'm going to activate keyboard this with settings. the router key. Keyboard echo words. Keyboard echo is currently set. I like it on words, but you can change it. I'm going to activate echo. it. Characters. You can have characters, words, words both characters, both and, characters words. and words, oh. or nothing. Um, I prefer keyboard just settings. speaking words keyboard because echo. I'm words. a pretty fast typist when I'm typing on the glass, and so I just like to have it. Uh, speaking the words. I'm going to hit next. Keyboard vibrations checkbox. Not checked. You can have it vibrate every time you type a character. Some people may like that when they're first starting off with touch braille. Some people won't. I, I prefer not to. I'm going to hit next. Keyboard clicks checkbox. Checked. I do like having clicks when I'm typing. As I'm typing it gives me a little bit of audio clicking telling me when I'm hitting a character. Um, when you mute the device, uh, this will t get turned off. So if you're in a meeting and you turn the volume all the way down, that'll obviously get muted. I'm going to hit next. Configure thumb keys. This allows you to actually configure your thumb keys. So if you prefer to have your panning keys, for example, your braille panning, key panning keys on the outers, uh, outer f two edges of the device, uh, then you can configure that to be whatever you want. Bottom. And that's the last item. So I'm going to press back. Options menu. Keyboard settings. I'm going to hit next. Miscellaneous settings. Here's some miscellaneous settings. I'm going to activate that. Miscellaneous settings. Vibration feedback checkbox. Not checked. So vibration feedback is specifically when uh, you navigate among items in the uh, in menus or, or just when you press the thumb keys. I, don't pref I prefer not to have that on. I think it vibrates a little bit too much, but some people may prefer it. I'm going to hit next. Use navigation sounds checkbox. Checked. 
use navigation sounds. Those are what people often refer to as ear cons, um, just the clicks and the, the sounds when screen changes and things like that. I like to keep them on. Some people may prefer to turn them off. Sound volume, match media volume. Sound volume, match media volume. So you saw that there's a TTS volume uh, option. This one is for the sounds as well. If you prefer when music is playing to have the, the ear cons and clicks and things to match that, you can have it do that. Launch tutorial. Launch tutorial. Now, when the Braille Note Touch first turns on, you'll be introduced with the Keysoft tutorial. And the Keysoft tutorial is a way for you to really get introduced to the device. And it's it's a fantastic way to, to learn how to set up. Not only are you getting introduced to the device, but you're, you're already pre-configuring your primary language profile. What literary Braille table do you use? What voice do you like? All that kind of stuff. If at any point you ever want to revisit the Braille Note Touch tutorial, you can just activate this. Keysoft tutorial. And now, welcome to the Braille Note Touch. Press the rightmost thumb key. And at this point, that's going to configure the. Uh, it'll walk you through the entire tutorial all over again. I'm going to press back. Manage settings. Launch tutorial. I'm going to press next to go Manage to the next gestures. item. Manage gestures allows you. Remember that the Braille Note Touch touch screen can be used just to navigate by explore by touch or doing different gestures. So you can configure gestures to do different things. I'm going to press next. Format markers settings. Format markers. I'm going to go into here by pressing the cursor router key just to activate it. Format markers settings. Format markers rendering. No format markers. So right now I have it set to not render any format markers. If I hit next. New line rendering. No indent. Format I'm markers sorry, rendering. I can activate no that markers. to format see our choices. Rendering. No format markers. So right now it's set to not show any formatting. If I press next again. Main format markers. Main format markers are things like new line symbols, page uh, alignment changes, headings, those kind of things. Things that are really page orientation related. You won't see things like font indicators, whether a font has changed, whether something's bolded, italicized, things that could change really, really rapidly in a document. You won't see those. So it's a way to kind of filter some of that out. If I hit next again. All format markers. All format markers will show you everything. Anytime there's a formatting change in a document, you're going to see dollar sign FS showing font start, dollar sign FE showing font end. So when there's font changes in there, you can actually do a command in, in keyword, for example, uh, space in the IN symbol for information, space.35, and you'll actually learn exactly, okay, what changed in that font modification. Was it bolded? Was it italicized? Was there a font size change, color, any of that kind of stuff? I'm going to press back. Format markers settings. I'm going to press Format next. Format markers rendering. New line rendering. No indent. There's something called new line rendering. So one of the other things that we heard from Braille Note users is a lot of people don't like seeing the dollar sign P symbol to show a new paragraph or new line change. And so we give you different options. So now I'm new going to activate that. New line marker. So there's the new line marker. That's the first option. That's the dollar sign P that people are used to. I'm going to press next. One space. You can have one space replace the new line marker. Two spaces. Two spaces. Three spaces. Three spaces. No indent. And what I like is something called no indent. And what that means is that when there is a new line it actually shows up on a new line of your Braille display. So um, you actually, when I press uh, space and dot four to go to the next line, the you don't see any symbol. It just goes straight to the first first um, cell on the display. When you're reading and proofreading something, sometimes it is more useful to uh, see the dollar sign P to see when those new lines are are, are showing up. Format markers Just settings. pressing back here. Miscellaneous settings. I'm going to press. Format markers settings. There's the format markers settings. I'm going to press next again. Visual display checkbox checked. So the visual display, you can turn that visually off on the on the Braille Note Touch. So many people who cannot see the screen, like myself, uh, may just turn that off. If you don't need the screen on, it's going to save a lot of battery to turn that off. So right now it's turned on. I want to press next. Visual Braille output checkbox not checked. This is kind of a cool feature. If I activate it. Visual Braille output. Check. You visually and teachers may really like this. Um, so as a student's working, you can actually see the content on their Braille display. So if I press next, for example, eject storage. Enter with E. You see eject storage, and visually on the Braille display, you'll see that at the top what the Braille display would look like. I'm going to turn that off. Visual Braille output checkbox. Visual Braille output not checked. But that's a feature that some teachers may like to uh, to automatically have enabled for their students so that they can see what's on the Braille display. I'm going to press Object next. Storage. Enter with E. 
Eject storage is something new to BrailleNote users, so an Android feature, you do need to actually eject your storage, just like you do on a PC or you should do on a PC. So the command enter with E, if you have a thumb drive in there and you're ready to take it out, press enter with E and, and correctly eject it. That prevents any type of corruption or anything like that from happening on your, uh, your thumb drives or your devices that are connected to your touch. Braille message display time in seconds, two. This is a new feature that I, uh, at the time that we air this, I don't even know if it's available. It'll be av available in version 1.01 .01 coming at the end of July. Um, it's called a Braille message display time. And this is for people who prefer to have the pop-up messages showing up in Braille on their display a little longer. So you can set it for uh, up to 30 seconds, I believe. Bottom. And that's the end of that. I'm going to press back or space with E. Options menu. So that was your miscellaneous settings. I'm going to press next user again. Guide. Here's the user guide. So you have immediate access to the user guide on the Braille Note Touch. I could activate that and go in to read the user guide. I'm going to press next again. Android system settings. And I told you this is sort of a bridge to the Android system settings. At this point, I can activate this right here settings using the router wireless key and now I'm in the Android system settings and at this point I could set up my wireless I could set up my Bluetooth Wi configure all of my accounts my date and time so it's a really simple way to get into the Android system settings using a, a very Keysoft-esque approach um, and remember all of this is first letter navigable so if I wanted to go to date and time I can press D data usage there's data usage display, display D again Dropbox Dropbox date and time and there's my date and time so for any of these things I can even though this is not a Keysoft app this is an Android application it's called the settings I'm still using first letter navigation to make myself efficient in any of these Keysoft applications I'm gonna jump back to the main menu by pressing the home button or space in all six dots. Main menu. and I'm back at the main menu so I hope you found this uh, tour of the Braille note options and settings uh, useful giving you an example of what settings are configurable on the BrailleNote Touch, and stay tuned for future BrailleNote Touch snapshot videos. Thanks for tuning in.